Welcome back to getting started with Unreal Technology. Over the next few videos, we're going to go over some key concepts that you need to know to be really effective at using Unreal Engine 3. Now, I've brought in my good friend, Mr. Logan Frank. How's it going, Logan? It's going good. And the first thing we're going to discuss are brushes and world geometry. Now, brushes we've already been exposed to on some level when we first built this uh, level that you see here. We've also technically seen world geometry, though you probably didn't know you were looking at it at the time. So what we're going to do is start simply with brushes and what they are. I'm going to get out of this viewport, and we'll pop over to the top view, which I'll make sure is in brush wire frame mode, and we'll expand this out to full size. First off, brushes. What are they? Logan, do you want to tell us just in general what a brush is? Well, a brush is like a, uh, a simple, solid primitive that is used to define the geometry of a level. It's like an individual component of a BSP generator, if that, you will. That's absolutely right. And it's not uh, it's in, used in a different sense than you generally hear the word brush. You know, In most cases, you think it's going to be a stick with some fur on one end that you dip in paint. But really, it's performing the same uh, function in a way in that it's being used to define what something looks like. Right. You could say that a brush is a block of additive or subtractive geometry. That's at absolutely. At its most basic level. Exactly. Now, what kinds of brushes do we have? Well, we have the Red Builder brush, which you've seen here. And the Red Builder brush is going to be your primary tool for creating all of your other brushes. You're going to give this some defined size and shape. You can even edit it and give it a customized shape if you like. And then based on the shape of this Red Builder brush, you're going to going to create your other types of brushes, which include additive brushes, subtractive brushes, or volumes. Now, let's uh, take a look at how you create these brushes. First off, here's our Red Builder brush, and it's floating out here in space. If you recall, the previous level that we created was a subtractive level, so you can think of all of this open space as a mass, a solid mass of uh, some sort of matter that we need to carve levels out of. So what I'm going to do is take my Red Builder brush and give it a defined shape using the Cube Builder. So I'm going to right-click over here on Cube, and we'll set this to a fairly large size. Let's say 1024 by 1024 by 512. And I'll click Build and Close. And we have this huge Red Builder brush now that I'm going to move out here into kind of an empty space in my level. And we're going to hit the Subtraction button. So if we come over here, you'll notice I have the CSG Subtract button on the left side of the uh, screen in the toolbox. We'll click on that, and I'm going to move the Red Builder brush out of the way. And what we've just done is we've created another brush from the Red Builder brush. And in this case, it's a subtractive brush. It is carving out an empty space for us to have room in. Now let's uh, demaximize this view, and let's fly out and take a look at what we've just done. Currently, there are no lights on because we're in lit mode, and there's no lights in this uh, particular section of the level. So let's switch over to unlit mode, and we can see that we do have a nice hollowed out area. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take my Red Builder brush and redefine it to something smaller. Let's say 256 cube. Okay, and let's put this right in the middle of this little open area that I've created. And I'll double check, make sure it is floating right in the middle. We can see over here in our perspective view that it is kind of right in the middle of the room. Now I'm going to click Add. And what happens is we just added a piece of matter into the level. We've uh, defined a new section with an additive brush. In fact, if I move this out of the way, let's go into brush wire frame mode, we can see there's now a blue brush in the middle of this room. And this is uh, the blue designates this as an additive brush, a part of the world we have defined to have solid mass. In effect, we've put matter back in. Now, just as a tidbit for your own uh, trivia, we uh, when we first created this level, it was a subtractive level, and that means that this is a big volume full of mass that we're going to carve rooms out of. Take a look out in the distance. You can actually see that we have a gigantic brush which encompasses the entirety of our level, and it's colored blue. When you create a subtractive level, what you're actually doing is having Unreal create one massive additive brush from which you're going to carve the rest of the uh, spaces of your level. Okay, so let's take a look at this room that we have created so far. Currently, we're looking at it in wireframe view. Let's go back to lit mode, and everything is really dark. So I'm going to hold down the L key and click on the floor, and let's just lift this up into the air so we'll pull our light up so we can see what's going on. In fact, I think I'm going to create another one so things aren't quite so dark. Okay, so there we go. We can see our geometry. Now, the funny thing is when you play the game, you're not really looking at brushes. What are you actually looking at, Logan? Well, you're actually looking at BSP. 
mm-hmm. the uh, the actual computed solid geometry of the world. Basically, you're looking at the result of the brushes. The brushes themselves, like you said, aren't the things you see. The engine takes those into account at build time and turns them into BSP. BSP is the actual polygons that you see rendered in the game. Right, and that's where building geometry comes into play. In fact, let's take a quick look at that. If we switch over to brush wireframe mode, we can see the brushes that are making up this level that we're looking at. But we can also switch over to true wireframe mode, and we can see the geometry that we would actually be looking at if we played the level, designated by all the triangular pieces everywhere. Now, how is this created? When we click the build button, what's going to happen is Unreal will compile our geometry. It's going to take a look at all these brushes that we've used to define our positive and negative spaces. And using that information, it's going to create this world geometry for us to see in the game. Now, uh, let's take a quick look at that process and how important it is to build. If I move this brush over like so, and let's just do it in brush wireframe mode. So I've just relocated this brush, as you can see here. If we go back to lit mode, it looks like I've separated my brushes, like I have a brush over here and another brush over here. What's happened is that I've moved my definition of additive space, but I haven't updated my world geometry. I do that by building my geometry, which can be done by clicking on the build button up here in the toolbar. So we click on that, give it a second to rebuild, don't worry about our errors, they're not important right now, and then everything updates and suddenly we can see our brush on the opposite side of the room. And all that's doing is showing you that there is a difference between your world geometry and your brushes, where your brushes are used to define what positive and negative spaces you're going to have, and your world geometry is created by the computer from those definitions. So that's really the key to building world geometry. Again, you're just going to use these brushes as we did earlier in our level. We created a a total of three subtractive brushes, one for the room on the left, one for the room on the right, and one for the hallway in the middle. And then when we compiled, when we built our level, we uh, allowed the computer to create the world geometry that we see in-game. So it's a really important concept for you to understand, and that's going to wrap things up for this video.